Pesiyat HaDashmaya, we're going to start today a very, very interesting sugya. A sugya that we've basically been leading up to in the last few shiurim. And we've spoken about two specific halachas. And then we needed to discuss these two halachas in order to get to today's she. Now, we've said a lot of disclaimers. And there's a very big disclaimer over here. This is not a thorough, comprehensive uh, dealing with all of these subjects that would take a bunch of shuim just to go through it. I'm not sure how many people are interested to hear every intrinsic detail, but I do want to try to get to some of the most common shilas, some of the most common applications of uh, the things that we're going to deal with, and that is, of course, websites and businesses that are open on Shabbos. We've spoken about in the past two problems. Problem number one is Mecca Chomemka which is the Xerid Rabbonon of doing business or having business open on Shabbos Kodesh, transaction being made on Shabbos. Number two, Schar Shabbos, the Issa of receiving payment for something that was done on Shabbos, whether it was service or a form of work or a product, we spoke about it at the time. Those are the two problems. We now have to move on to the, re- the major shaila of a website that is open on Shabbos Kodesh. A person has a website open on Shabbos Kodesh. What is the din with having a website that makes money? People going could go on the website and they could buy products from there. They could go on and they could, you know, click services. Maybe you're paying for certain things. Whatever it is that you're offering people, am I allowed to keep my website open on Shabbos and allow Goyim to go and purchase things and, of course, me to make money uh, in, in that case over there? So according to most poiskim, it is actually mutter for a person to have his website open on Shabbos. He's allowed to remain there on Shabbos, even if the credit card processed on Shabbos itself, in other words, uh, whoever, whatever you're offering, they're going to swipe the credit card on Shabbos and the money's going to go directly inside in that case and the money goes in and the purchase happens on Shabbos or of course on Yom Tov as well. There are poiskim that say it's better to schedule the processing of the credit card after Shabbos if that's possible, which in many websites that is a possibility. Um, And and in fact, in many websites and things they offer, uh, the credit card only actually goes through once the item has been checked, that it's in stock and it's ready to go out, it's ready to be shipped. Some places offer payment only at that time, which will of course be Monta Shabbos, which will be okay. But the general idea of having a website open on Shabbos and your business, so to speak, being open, making money, is not an issue. The Makar for this, by the way, is a Marashag in Chuvas. The Chuvas Marashag, Shaz the Chuvas Marashag, in Chelik Bey Simon Kuf Yudzayin, where he brings down the Shaila of a vending machine, where the person owns vending machines in various places that are, of course, populated by Goyim and not Koshish Yidin in that case. And therefore, there's no problem of having a business like that open on Shabbos and things being bought from you on Shabbos. By the way, it's not only the Marishag, there's a Tshuva in the Chalkis Yaakov in Erechaim Simon Samach Zayin, Debet Sinarov in Be'er Moshe, Chelik Vov Simon Pei Dalud, and the Mishnah Lochas Ramanasha Klein in Chelik Dalud Simon Lamad Gimel, and also on Makel in that in that, uh, in that uh, the Heter as well. Now, the reason why it's Mutta is number one, there's no human intervention happening on Shabbos. I'm not doing anything on Shabbos. There's no Marasayan because it's not in a Yiddish place, so there's no problem of Mecca Chamemka. Schar Shabbos is also not a problem because they're paying for things that cost me money. We spoke about that by Schar Shabbos, and therefore there's no problem in that case. Now, just to be known, there are machmirim in this case. The Min Chatz Yitzchok has a tshuva in Chelek Gimel Simon Lama Dalet, and Shevet Halevi is noita lahachme only, not mamash machme, in Chelek Yud Simon Nun Vov. So it could be that there is a mokim for a person to be machme in that case, especially, for example, as we're familiar with the Gemara in Shabbos Kuf Chof Aleph Omet Aleph, where the Gemara tells us in Shabbos Kuf Chof Aleph a case of Yosef Ben Simai. Yosef ben Simai had a situation where there was a building of his that was on fire. And the Goyim came along to try and extinguish that fire. And the Gemara tells our Shabbos Kuf Chavalev that Yosef ben Simai refused to allow them to extinguish the fire on Shabbos Kodesh. Now, a nace happened, the Gemara tells us, and a downpour, all of a sudden, it was a beautiful day, all of a sudden a downpour happened, and the rain put out the fire in that way. Now, the Gemara tells us clearly, it was mutter for him to allow the goy to put out the fire. There was no problem. And save his stuff. There was no problem whatsoever. But he decided to be machmeh, and he decided to make sure that there was no shaila whatsoever, and he didn't want to get involved in any profiting or whatever it may be, even through a goy, even though it was mutter, he decided 
to be extra machme, and the Rabbi Nishloilam gave him an ace. Now, there's a famous website that I don't know if any of you have ever been on, but for example, there's a famous website called B&H, a beautiful store that I myself have been to, a beautiful, incredible store. I've even been to the owner's house in Monsi, one of the owner's houses in Monsi. I tried my best for the guys. I tried, what can I do? I'll go upon him. B&H is a beautiful, it's actually, it's rated on the internet as one of America's top businesses. That's what it says. One of America's top businesses owned by two Hasidim. If you go on the website, it tells you clearly. The website is open on Shabbos. The checkout is closed. That means you cannot purchase anything. You cannot buy anything. Now, I'm sure they could have found a terim to say it's mutter. They could have given it over to a goy. There's many people that need stuff, electronics, this, that, and the other. But you know what? They didn't rely on Heterim. They were machme way more than they had to be. Closed their business, and I think we're familiar that they kind of did okay because of it. So therefore you don't lose out by making sure Shabbos Kodesh is a top priority. By the way, another thing, Rabbi Yashav Zatzal Paskind, that if you're worried that the most of the people, the majority of people that buy from your specific website could be non-from, non-religious goyim, uh, Yidin, I'm sorry, meaning that you're selling things that Jewish people are buying, they're just not religious, they don't keep Shabbos, then Rabbi Yasha Paskin, maybe you should vadai, close your website because you're causing them, maybe it's a Shah Lif Neiva. So if, you're, if your website sells Judaic items and you get a lot of clicks on Shabbos by Jewish people that are unfortunately not religious, so then in Achanam it could be there, you have to close your website. There is something called, by the way, for the Olam that are familiar, PBC. PBC is a famous site, right? Everybody knows what it is, right? Pay by click. Right, which basically means if you want your website to do well, you pay Google a certain amount of money, you give them like a lump sum, and every time a click happens, then it comes off of that sum. It's Google's interest to try and make sure your website goes to the top of the list, so it gets more clicks, so Google makes more money. It's a complicated procedure, how it works exactly, but I'll compare it's, it's advertisement, the halacha is that will be mota, because you're taking off money as opposed to making money, and whatever it is, it's more for Google than anyone else. But I'll compare that's just an interesting thing over there. Now, when it comes to an auction on Shabbos Kodesh, what is the halacha when they bid on an auction? For example, eBay. So I thought before I was into the, you know, before I was writing these notes, preparing the showroom, I'm like, eBay, gosh, I remember that from like 10 years ago. Nobody uses eBay anymore. Who uses eBay anymore? It's like old stuff. So it's not true, by the way. Rabbi Sai, 138 million people are active all the time on eBay. The app is used by 3.67 million people every single month. There's a lot of, a lot of active activity going on in eBay. A lot of people are busy with eBay. And the question is like this. If I want to bid on something and the auction will end and on Shabbos. The auction will end. In other words, the end time for the auction will be Shabbos Kodesh. I want to bid on that item. It's going to end the auction on Shabbos Kodesh. What is the halacha in that case? Am I allowed to do so or not? Of course, I'm clicking on Erev Shabbos, but the auction is ending on Shabbos Kodesh. What is the din over there? So there is a dimion to this. Um, of course, many of the poskim, you know, from the Gedolia Achroinim didn't speak about this exact case, but we find similarities, and when we're done with and Milsa, there's a tshuva in the Maram Shik, in Orachayim Sim and Kuf Lamad Aleph. You look also in the Chalkis Yaakov and the Chedek Aleph Sim and Samachay, where they bring down that since the conclusion of the online auction does not actually constitute an actual transaction. It doesn't constitute an actual sale, it's just a commitment between the seller and the higher bidder to be able to complete the sale at a later time. By the way, I've been asked a Shaila about if ending on Pesach, if I want to bid for Chomets, for example, whiskey, there's a whiskey auction, this was a Shaila that came to me last year, it's a whiskey auction and it's ending on Cholamoid Pesach, can I bid for the whiskey if the Maisa, the end of the auction happens on Pesach and it could be Amkoina, Chomets on Pesach, which will be a Shaila. By the way, just interesting to note, I checked Bi'in into the sugya of eBay and it came out the following, that if you look at the contract that eBay have, they say very clearly, that when you bid for an item, it's your commitment to pay for that item, right? Now, of course, on condition that you're the higher bidder. But then when you bid for the item, that's already your commitment to pay. When did I bid? I bid on Wednesday morning. True, the auction ends on Shabbos, but I bid on Wednesday morning. If I bid on Wednesday morning, according to eBay, I mice have already put myself a, a way to pay. I've committed to pay, providing, of course, the condition that I'm the highest bidder in that case. Okay? Auto bidding 
Oh, so the, ske- the question is, are you allowed to schedule a bid to be placed on Shabbos? Auction snipe, for example, they call it. That will be asa, to st- actually schedule a bid on Shabbos. That will be problematic in that case. And scheduling an auction to begin on Shabbos, according to most posts, is going to be muta, because it's on the other party to complete the actual sale. Now, if you sell, so- if you sell something on eBay, is a person allowed to schedule um, the auction to finish on Shabbos? Yes. Once again, it's not the final transaction, it's just an agreement. Now let's move on to one other shaila. And again, Rabbi said that the, the shaila goes on and on and intricate details of different things. We're not going to get to everything. Just to give the Rashi Prokin the ideas of what's going on. Let's talk about something like Amazon. But before we get to Amazon, any type of Jewish owned website that sells uh, things using a third party, right? Called a fulfillment center. Using a fulfillment center, what is the aloch in that case? And that fulfillment center operates on Shabbos and Yom Tov, which means I've given my product to them. Are they are, are they yes or are they not allowed to do that? So there are some two problems. There's Amira La'akum, of course I'm an instructed goy to do something for me on Shabbos. And there's also Mecca Chomemka. Now there is a Shulchan Aruch the Aliga Balatanya in Graz, Simon Reish Memdalad Ois Chov, where he brings down that if they don't have to do it on Shabbos and Yom Tov, meaning I didn't tell them that they have to do it on Shabbos and Yom Tov, so that could be permitted in many cases. Now, let's move on a moment to Amazon. Okay, you guys are busy, Baruch Hashem in the base Medrash. I've been making phone calls to some big Amazon sellers to ask them exactly how things work and give me some more details and explain to me some of the processes of how things work over there. So when it comes to Amazon, and by the way, very important, we are not discussing at this moment, another time, Be'ez Hashem, yes, we're not discussing ordering things on Amazon that deliver on Shabbos. That we'll get to. Am I allowed to go along and order something next day delivery on Friday? It's going to arrive on Shabbos. Am I allowed to do that? We'll talk about that. There's a Shaila of We'll talk about that at a different time. We'll get to Shurim when it comes to ordering things and deliveries of Goyim and Marasain. Here we're talking about owning an Amazon uh, company or instructing Amazon or working with Amazon to, in order to sell your product. Is that Muta or is that not Muta? And by the way, there are many, many from people that own such companies and make a lot of money from such ideas, which is why it's a very, very common Shaila. I'm not going to go through a comprehensive idea, just to give you a few things. The Oilim are familiar, for example, with FBA. FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. That means it's my product, I've given it to Amazon, Amazon are going to along, go and ship it out, they're going to do everything, and they'll give me whatever is payment. That is generally not a problem. Bechlal, they're doing it for themselves, they're making money, of Adam also making money, that's not a problem of Shabbos, it's nothing to do with Shabbos, I didn't instruct them to do it on Shabbos, and therefore generally FBA will not be a problem. But if you have, for example, FBM, that's more problematic. FBM means Fulfillment by Merchant, that means you you are the ones that do all the shipping. You're the guy that has the warehouse, you do all the shipping in that case, which means, by the way, if you have FBM, you have no Prime. There is no Amazon Prime when it comes to FBM. However, if you want to have Prime next day shipping, then in that case, you have to have SFP. SFP basically is Seller Fulfilled Prime. Okay? Show me you're impressed over here, right? <laughs> Seller fulfilled prime means that you have to have your stats very, very high. You have to have high shipping, quick shipping, otherwise they're gonna knock you off the list very, very quickly in that case. And therefore, there's an option in that case, by the way, to turn it off. And I know people that have businesses, Yiddish are from Heimish people that have businesses and they have SFP, that means seller fulfilled prime. They do it the next day delivery, which means if somebody orders on Friday, my company is going to be shipping things out on Shabbos morning. What's the heta? So what they do is they actually switch it off on Friday morning and then they switch it back on right before Shabbos. This way, by the time you order it right before Shabbos, it's already too late to get it the next day and it started to filling it on Motsu Shabbos, right? Very interesting idea to think about. But again, there are a lot of intricate details that go on together with that. There's also the halachas of ordering, which we'll get to a different time. But that's the basic ideas of websites. Mecha Chomemcha, Shabbos. Have an amazing day.